What is up, YouTube? I am in Puerto Viejo, Costa Rica. Um, I haven't really been making videos lately. I've just been kind of working and just kind of living. Uh, this place is pretty amazing, as you can see behind me. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm staying, right, right there. It's called Lazy Loft. It's pretty awesome. So if you're ever in Puerto Viejo. You should come to Lazy Loft because it's tight. I've been asked a lot lately uh, about how I can afford to travel uh, both on YouTube, on Twitter, and in person. So since there's not really anything adventurous and super fun and worth filming here, I figured I'd uh, have a little chat. So. <laughs> So first I want to start off with, uh, I want to say thank you to all 885 of you, uh, getting pretty close to a thousand and that's exciting. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching. Um, not sure why you want to see me do the things that I do, but it's cool that you do. So, <clears throat> so I have to, I guess, first say that I'm not rich. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a disposable income. I don't have a rich girlfriend that pays for everything, parents that pay for everything. I do everything on my own. So let's knock that question out for sure. This is how I did it. I sold everything. I sold my businesses. I sold my car. I sold golf clubs. I sold bicycles, motorcycles, bed, kitchen stuff, all the stuff in my garage. I sold almost literally, hey, I'm working here. So I almost literally sold everything that I own, apart from a 51 Ford pickup truck that I kept, the drums, a couple of basses, maybe a guitar, books, a lot of books, stuff from college and from the Marines and from growing up and from my other travels. So stuff that's kind of irreplaceable to me, everything else is gone. So I have no expenses. I don't have car insurance. I don't have a car payment. I don't have a house payment, electric, gas, sewage. Uh, I have a cell phone bill and that's it and travelers insurance everything else I have to pay for is for food lodging and transportation so that is one of the reasons why I can work only one month a year and travel for 11 months the second thing is I don't spend my money on really anything when I'm home I don't go out drinking I don't smoke I don't go to the movies I don't go out to dinner um, I don't do any of those things because when I'm home I'm there to hang out with my family uh, and see my friends every now and again and work so that I can travel um, and that's I think that's a lot of the problems with a lot of people who say oh I can't afford to travel it's probably because you spend your money on dumb shit and so once I learned to stop doing that it made my life so much easier um, if you really want to travel as often as I do full time you something has to has to budge. Uh, I was traveling and working at the same time. I owned a couple of businesses. Uh, I had all the things I had going on back home. And then when I was traveling, I had to deal with both of those. And that put a lot of stress on me. And it made traveling not as fun because I was worried about bills and emails and things like that back home. So I had to make a decision. Do I want to travel or do I want to work? And I've been working the majority of my life. And I decided that I didn't want to work anymore. I just wanted to travel. I just wanted to see the world. I wanted to experience cultures, not not just going to a town for like a week or so, but staying for weeks, months at a time. So you really get immersed into the culture and into their little social microcosms that they have. And so because of that, I can, I can allow myself a very little amount of money to spend every day. And it's around $30. So $1,000 a month, give or take, is basically what I... Uh, what I've budgeted myself to travel and to be honest it's really not hard to do it's actually quite easy one of the things you have to do is you have to prioritize you know what's most important is staying in a in a nice hotel 
with the pool and air conditioning? Is that what's important to you? Is flying first class important to you? Is flying at all important to you? To me, it's not. Unless I have a long distance I need to travel, I'll fly. But for the most part, I travel by land. Uh, it's significantly cheaper. Um, you also get a chance to see the country. You know, um, you take a bus through the countryside or a train. Like if you're in Europe, you take a train through um, through the Alps or even hitchhiking. I hitchhiked quite a, quite a bit this last time. I uh, hitchhiked from basically from Guatemala all the way to Costa Rica and didn't have to pay anything. So that's the less amount of money you can spend on those kinds of things, the more money you can spend on other things. Like, again, when I, I had to prioritize something in South Africa, cage shark diving has always been something that I wanted to do, and it was kind of expensive, way out of my budget, but because I stayed under my budget for so long, I had an extra amount of money left over, so I was like, what do you do? If you're in South Africa, you go swim with great whites. That's just what you do. Another good way to, uh, to help balance your money and budget your money is I volunteer so if you volunteer somewhere a lot of times it's a trade-off for accommodation uh, either free food or discounted food things like that so like I'm doing here at Lazy Loft uh, I'm, I'm volunteering here I've been here for going on nine weeks now basically rent free and I just have to work at the reception and I've taken on some other responsibilities just because that's just thing, something that I always do uh, so you know the money that I'm saving with that and plus I don't go out to eat I don't really drink all that often um, if you don't want to sell all your things like I did uh, and you want to just go on like maybe a long a long a long-term travel maybe three four weeks one of the things you can do is quit drinking quit smoking uh, just quit going out to like movies going out to dinner quit doing all those things because all those things are still gonna be there when you get back from your trip. So again, you have to prioritize. What's most important is traveling to India more important than watching the new Batman movie. And I know it seems petty, but it's really not. It's ev for every $10 you save, $20 saves, that all adds up and that, that turns into plane tickets for me. Obviously this isn't like scripture. Like this isn't something that every single person can do or needs to do in order to do it. Everyone's different. Uh, everyone comes from different um, social classes, from different cultures, from different parts of life. How I travel isn't necessarily synonymous with every single person that travels, so everyone's different. For instance, there's uh, Max. Max, come here. Come in. How you doing? This is Max. Max. He is from France, even yeah. though he has a British accent. Exactly. It's kind of silly, but... Um, He's traveling kind of as well. Yeah. You want to kind of say what you're up to? Yes, yeah, so, um, this is my internship. Um, I'm going to be here for three months. I've been here for one month. So uh, my university requires that each year we go um, on an internship. So last year was my first year of university. And we had to go to an English-speaking country. So this time last year I was in South Africa. Mm. And um, this year we had to be in a Spanish-speaking country. So Costa Rica was my choice since it was like... I looked for the probably the most safe, the safest country in Latin America. That was like my yeah. main. That's the thing for my parents as well. Right. The scenery, the culture, the way that, like people interact with you in Costa Rica won't be the same anywhere else in the world. So I wanted to be really here. I'm sure it's safe. Yeah. So basically, I'm traveling to enhance my skills in Spanish, um, to acquire knowledge from like how to how the hostel works. Um, and when I get back to France, I have to do a report on what I did around here. Oh yeah. How did you How did you save money for the trip? Um, so basically, I have two parts. Um, the first one, I have two parts. So the first one it comes from my parents. Um, they put money on the side for me since I was small, and now I'm putting it into traveling and acquiring experience. And also, I had a job as a waiter, and also worked at the till. In, um, oh, where? At the till. What's that? The till in the, in the supermarkets. Oh. No, the ca till. Cashier. Cashier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, yeah. Um, till yeah. equals cashier. That's it. So, um, yeah, I got, I got some money from that. And now I'm putting it aside and spending it here. And 
Hey, people are going to say, but why cost Rica? Because, you know, they're going to say, um, you can you spend a lot of money in Costa Rica, but yeah. on that side, it's not really the amount of money that you spend. It's more about the knowledge and the experience and the people that you meet that is what you get out of the experience, and it's what's worth more. Yeah, it's it's money. priceless. You yeah, can't put priceless. a price tag you on can't, experience. You can't really. No. He's 19 years old, and he's already got it. Got it, got it. Cool. So, yeah. Thanks, Cheers. man. No Cheers. problem. Smoke about it later. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Like I said, everyone has a different experience. Don't take what I'm saying completely as as the only way to do it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, because there's tons of ways to do it. I'm just trying to outline some ways that I do it. Third thing I do, while I'm traveling, um, I basically only travel by land. Uh, air travel is really expensive. Um, it fluctuates throughout the year. However, it's more times than not, way more expensive. And since I don't have time constraints, I don't have to fly everywhere. I can go by ground. So I use buses when I'm in Europe. I go by trains. Um, I hitchhiked. Hitchhiking is amazing. You get to meet so many amazing people. I hitchhiked from Guatemala to Costa Rica uh, with a friend uh, two or three months ago. And we met truck drivers and we had a family pick us up in a minivan and drive us 30 minutes past where they lived to take us to where we were going and they turned around and went back it was incredible they gave us fruit we played with their little kid so i'm not saying hitchhiking isn't dangerous but it's not dangerous <laughs> i mean you just have to pay attention you know a little couple of tips on hitchhiking don't hitchhike at night I don't usually hitchhike alone. I have, and it's fine. Uh, I have a beard and covered in tattoos, and I'm a guy, so I'm a little. I look a little less like a target because there were some spots that we couldn't hitchhike, and I think it cost us maybe four dollars to get from Guatemala all the way to Costa Rica. Being that we had to take a bus every now and again because we were in a place where there just wasn't people to pick us up hitchhiking or. Well, we got dropped off in the center of the city, so we had to take a bus to the outside of the city so someone would pick us up. Accommodation is a big thing. Uh, I couch surf a lot. I stay in hostels. I rarely stay in a hotel. Rarely. Uh, I stay at people's houses that I meet, and I also volunteer. So if you volunteer at a hostel or you volunteer, uh, like I, I did um, in Nepal, I just volunteered at, at a gentleman named Druba's house and just helped around the house and got to know everyone in the village. It was so amazing. So that, again, cuts cuts your money down because you're not spending any money. So when you volunteer, more times than not, uh, it's for the, the, your accommodation. Um, you'll either get free food or you'll get discounted food. Um, a lot of times, if they have like rentals, you can do those for free, things like that. So basically, what, what I can do is I've budgeted myself to $1,000 a month. Um, which comes down to around $30 a day, I think. Uh, and so 30 something dollars a day. It's not hard to do, especially when you're traveling in Southeast Asia or you're traveling Central and South America where it's quite a bit cheaper than it is for me back in the States or if you're from Europe or wherever where everything's a little more expensive, the cost of living is a little bit higher. One thing I do with um, when, I'm, when I'm looking for a hostel, and this also will help you save money, is look for hostels that have free Wi-Fi, that have free breakfast, that have free shuttles to and from the airport, um, that have free rentals of stuff, um, things like that. Because the, the, the least amount of money that you can spend, the better, obviously. Now, I do realize that everyone is different. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone comes from different backgrounds, different cultures. So what I'm saying isn't like a how-to, like this isn't how you do it. This is just how I've done it. So there you have it. Um, let's do a little. Let's do a little rundown. So if you want to travel, if you want to travel full time like me, sell everything that you own. Travel by land as much as you can. Hitchhike whenever you can. Stay in hostels. Don't stay in hotels. Volunteer when you can. And just remember that everything is. Everyone is different. And prioritize. Prioritize your spending, both when you are abroad and when you're at home. I hope that helped out. If you guys have any questions, please add them down here in the comments and uh, I'd like to think that I'm pretty good at replying to comments so I'll reply to you as soon as I can and uh, yeah thank you so much for watching I appreciate each and every one of you and peace